Howdy, my name is Ethan Galloway. My name is Giuseppe Rizzi. And this is our project Wireless Power Harvesting. We're working at the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering under the advisors of Dr. Carceline and Dr. Martinez. So the purpose of this project, Wi-Fi power is everywhere. In first world countries, almost every building has some sort of Wi-Fi. And this is actually electromagnetic energy that you can harvest and use to trickle charge devices and power, low power sensor networks. You could even extend this to space-based power where you beam electromagnetic energy down to remote areas of the earth. Um, and overall, the main obstacle to using this in modern devices, at least at a long range, is the efficiency and the low power abilities of these devices. So our research goal is we're gonna harvest ultra low power microwave signals to provide wireless power. Our input power is again as low as negative 30 dBm. We're gonna run it at 2.4 gigahertz AC. There'll be only discrete components and no other power sources available to run this circuit. Here's an illustration of our project. So first we have a Wi-Fi router, generates a 2.4 gigahertz signal, and that turns into a seven millivolt RMS signal, which is only one microwatt. That's the negative 30 dBm that Ethan mentioned. And from there, we convert that to a one volt DC output that you can use to flash an LED, um, charge a battery or anything like that that we mentioned. So here's a subsystem overview. So here we have the impedance matching circuit that goes through the rectifier. And then we have a DC converter. So as it goes through the impedance matching network, the, it, it, it has a passive boost to it. And then the DC to DC converter has a further boost, which boosts it up to one volt. And so here's a full system completed on a printed circuit board in the final design. And here's the different subsystems of the circuit. So down there in the bottom left corner is the radio frequency section. That's all surface mount components um, to be as low loss as possible and handle that 2.4 gigahertz. The rest is the DC to DC converter, which we'll talk about each of these parts individually. So the impedance matching circuit and rectifier, we fully simulated the matching network and the rectifier with both passive components and microstrips. We built a first iteration component, which was able to harvest and produce 45 millivolts with only a negative 25 dBm input. Uh, we built a second matching circuit with the lessons learned from the previous one, but we were unable to test it. Uh, you may notice that we were able to decrease our parasitic inductance by putting more vias and increasing the via diameter on the print circuit board. So here we have our SWR measurements, which is the SWR is a measure of efficiency and how much power we can collect. So here we have our uh, network analyzer results on the, on the left of the screen and on the bottom of the screen, our simulated results, which show what we kind of wanted. Our circuit is off and it's at 1.66 gigahertz instead of 2.4 gigahertz. Here's the most uh, important parameter for us though. Here we have our DC output versus input power. Here we're getting 45 millivolts at negative 25 dBm. What we simulated and what we wanted is at negative 30 dBm, or is get 45 millivolts at that power level. And then for the DC to DC converter, which takes what Ethan, the output of Ethan's subsystem, which is at this small 45 millivolt DC voltage, and boosts that up to 95 millivolts. And at 95 millivolts, um, you can actually commercially boost up to higher voltages. And at higher voltages, you can start to turn on LEDs and things like that. With 45 millivolts, almost nothing um, that would be useful in everyday life can turn on at that voltage. So in order to, to make this boost possible with this tiny input voltage, I use a special Cole Pitts oscillator to generate the duty cycle, which is required to run the boost converter. We also use special components, a zero threshold transistor, and some special low voltage drop diodes, which were the best discrete components we could find available. Here's the final results of this circuit by itself. Working with 45 millivolts input, it can generate a boost of about 2.1 volts. Sorry, it's a boost of about 2.1, which is 95 millivolts. And that yellow line you see there in the left chart is the threshold of what we were what we needed. We needed above 80 millivolt output. 
And you can see we met that result with the circle dot there. So here's our initial integration results. We got these back in February with our first printed circuit board. We got negative 18.8 dBm. Um, and with that power, we were able to produce 84 millivolts DC, which that 84 millivolts could then be taken with another boost stage and boost that up to one volt with a commercial boost chip. In our video that we have after this video, we go into more details about the um, about what we got. And this was only the results for the, we were kind of inhibited by the pandemic happened. So our second iteration board, we were unable to test. We don't have access to the lab anymore because of the coronavirus pandemic. So comparing this and drawing conclusions from our current results. So with our intermediate results, which is the ones that Ethan mentioned in the last slide, we obtained negative 18.8 dBm, which is comparable to the negative 20 dBm, which is the lowest that some researchers were able to do um, to harvest from Wi-Fi signals recently. Using more advanced methods, other researchers were able to achieve negative 25 dBm. Our, in terms of the DC to DC boost converter, we outperformed many other research projects with minimum startup voltage. And very recent research was able to match the results with high efficiency but that wasn't applied to wireless energy harvesting as in our project. So overall, our results show promise towards reaching our goal, negative 30 dBm. We successfully placed the project near the cutting edge with the intermediate results that we obtained, which you'll see in the video. Here's the work cited. Thank you very much. Upcoming, we have a video demonstrating our first iteration results and getting negative 18.8 dBm of input power. Hello, I'm Giuseppe Rizzi. I am Ethan Galloway. We're at the Electrical Engineering Labs at Texas A&M University. And I'm here to show you the, uh, the circuit. We're here to show you the circuit. So this RF signal generator is the only source of power for the entire circuit. We have 18.8 dBm coming in at 1.7 gigahertz into the circuit through these two wires, only source of power. Now the 1.67 gigahertz is a bit of a tuning error, but we can fix that in later revision of the printed circuit board. We've gotten more revisions coming down for our senior design project. So this circuit board right here is the entire impedance matching network and rectifier. After that, it comes into all DC. And here you have ultra low voltage oscillator here on the left, and over here on the right is a first stage boost converter. This does the initial boost. It has a one mega ohm load, and here you see the final output at the one mega ohm load. So we're getting 81 millivolts out with this negative 18.8 dBm input. And here, over here, I have it plotted. Uh, this is with a portable oscilloscope. It's showing the output, very stable output, plus or minus one millivolt ripple approximately. And I'm going to show you also the output of the oscillator. It's a very strong oscillator at this low voltage. So put that in there. So here you can see a very strong, um, almost 300 millivolt peak to peak sine wave. Um, and with this negative, with this uh, 80 millivolt output, we can uh, power commercially available chips, which can boost up to the final one volt that we require.